Native integrations and automation allow you to connect Streak with other tools and automate repetitive tasks and processes without leaving Gmail. In this lesson, we'll explain the basic structure of integrations and automation in Streak. We'll walk through setting up an automation and how to manage automations you've already created. Each automation is made up of a trigger step and at least one action step. When the trigger event occurs, it kicks off the following action steps. You can create more complex automations by adding more than one action. Both the trigger and the action steps can happen within Streak, or you can trigger an automation when an event happens in another tool like Calendly or Typeform. Let's create our own automation and see how it works. To get started, head to the pipeline that you want to automate. Click the three vertical dots at the top right of your pipeline and select the Integrations and Automation menu option. Here, you'll find a number of automation templates that you can use out of the box to do everything from capturing lead information from a form or event details from a scheduling tool to automating repetitive tasks and mail merges within Streak. You can also create your own native integration or automation from scratch. In this lesson, I'll show you how to create a box and contact for each Google Forms submission. When we open the template, we'll see the trigger and actions included in this automation. When a Google Form is submitted, this automation will create a box in Streak and add a contact to the box. Pick your form to begin customizing the template. Each time somebody fills out and submits the form, this automation will run. You can also create a new Google Form if you need. Once you select a form, you'll see sample data from a recent form submission. This is real data that you've previously collected, so it can help you understand what data is passed along for each step of the automation. Use the arrows at the top of the trigger step to scroll through sample data if needed to find a complete example that will help you fill in your automation steps. Next, we'll start configuring the action steps. The data fields in the action steps accept text entries, or you can pull in data from previous steps in the automation. Starting with the box name, double-click in the data field and choose a dynamic entry from the Google form in the previous step. Find the form question that matches with this box data. In this case, we want the box name to be the business name of a cafe or restaurant. Hit enter or return on your keyboard to fill in the data field. The data that appears in the action step fields shows what would actually happen in this automation using the sample data from the trigger step and previous steps. If this data isn't what you expected, you can reconfigure the fields to make sure your automation does exactly what you want. Continue filling out the fields by double-clicking and choosing which data should be entered in your box columns when the automation runs. In this case, we want these boxes to be entered in the lead stage of our pipeline. Click Show More if you have additional box columns you'd like to fill out with this automation. Here, we'll include the Bean Types column, which tells us about the products this lead is interested in. When you've finished filling in data for the first step of the automation, you're ready to move on to the second step. This step adds a contact to the box that we've just created in step 2. Just like before, double-click in the data field to type an entry or choose data from a previous step. If you're creating a contact in an automation step, you can choose to enable automatic email sharing. This will add all of your team's emails with the contact to the box automatically, so you'll have a timeline of any previous interactions with your team. Select True to turn on email sharing for contacts created in this automation. If you'd like to customize an automation with additional steps, click Add Step in the bottom right corner and select the app or tool where you want the action step to happen. Let's send a notification to Slack when we get a new lead so our sales team can get right on it. Pick the Slack channel where we want to send a notification message. And enter the message that you want to appear in the channel every time this automation is triggered. I'm going to use a combination of data from the Google form and custom text to give more detail. Now that we've finished adding steps to the automation, let's edit the automation name by double-clicking and typing at the top of the automation. When you're happy with your automation, click Create. You'll see a notification in the bottom left corner of your Gmail window confirming that your automation has been set up successfully. Once you've created automations for a pipeline, you can find them in the Mine tab of the Integrations and Automation panel. From here, you can edit an automation. 
pause or delete it. Or see recent activity logs for this automation. This is helpful if your automation has an error or needs troubleshooting. Click on a recent activity to see details about each step of the process and diagnose where an automation may have failed or not performed as intended. Native integrations and automation in Streak give you many options for automating your processes without leaving Streak. If an automation you need isn't offered, you can also use tools like Zapier to create custom integrations or use the Streak API to build your own custom automation. Now that you know how to customize automation templates, you're ready to automate your pipeline in minutes with any of our templates or creations of your own. Happy automating!